This week, I've been spending a lot of time writing with a Kaweco student fountain pen, and I thought I'd make a video sharing some thoughts I have about this pen with you. So this pen is a very different take on fountain pens based on relative to other pens from Kaweco. So I want to explain why. So first of all, um, I got this pen for uh, as a gift from a friend over the holidays. And it comes in this box, so I thought I'd do a quick unboxing for you. It comes in this paper sleeve, and then you get these Kaweco tins, which I think are really cool. This is a very durable um, pencil case that I find you can actually use uh, on a daily basis and it, and it holds up. So it opens up, you get the pen wrapped in plastic. So you can see it's a, uh, the model is a student, it's a fountain pen, it's a fine nib, and it's whatever this uh, color of blue is called. Um, this is what the pen looks like. So why do I say this is a very different take on pens from Kaweco relative to the other products? Well, in my opinion, Kaweco is one of those brands that centers their image, their reputation around one line. When you think of Kaweco, uh, if you're like me, the, the only thing that really comes to mind is the Kaweco Sport. Um, there's the fountain pens, the gel pens, the ballpoint pens, the mechanical pencils like this, there's the plastic ones like this, there's the aluminum ones, there's the steel ones, the brass ones, there's you know all sorts of different variations and colors and additions, but they're all based on the sport. That's the that's the pen that Kaweco is is known for. Now, Kaweco has other pens in the lineup. Um, one of the ones that I really enjoy is the Special, especially in the mechanical pencil form. But as you can see, it carries a lot of that brand DNA um, that is found in the sport. Namely, it has the similar silhouette, uh, but also it has these faceted sides, which I've grown to just associate with Kaweco when there's um, you know, a knockoff pen or, or just a pen that has these faceted sides, Kaweco comes to mind. Um, even in their least expensive offering, which I don't own, I think it's called the Parkio, per, Parkio, 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 uh, whatever their uh, Pilot Kakuno competitor is in the ten to fifteen dollar range. They're really inexpensive plastic pen. Even that is faceted and has a bit of that um, Kaweco Sport look. Now, I know. Kaweco makes other pens, the Lilliput, the Supra, the Dia2, you know, but those are um, not, I would argue, not what the brand is known for. So when they came out with this, um, I thought it was a very different direction for them because this pen, I believe they're intending to be more of a mass market offering. Uh, they're hoping, hoping for it to be a, a popular pen, but this looks nothing like uh, a Kaweco Sport and shares really not much in common at all. So I thought we could take a look at what this pen represents, uh, what I think is cool, uh, what I think could be improved, and then I'll give you a thought of my thoughts on um, whether I like this pen and whether I think it's worth the $60 that Kaweco is asking for it. Uh, so first off, let's let's talk, talk about some of the positives. This is a very nice plastic pen. Uh, if you watch this channel, you know I'm generally a fan of plastic. I, I like the, the weight, um, the durability, and this is no different. It seems like a very nicely polished, uh, nice color, um, very robust feeling, good quality plastic. Um, I really enjoy the way they do the branding here. Um, I'm trying to get the camera to focus. So, there you go. So you can see, I think it's a very classy um, design, very nice font, very nicely done. It's not, it's not raised. It doesn't feel like it's going to rub off. I think that's really nicely done. Um, as overall, the other thing I really enjoy is if you can tell the shape of the barrel is not completely smooth. It has this sort of bulge to it. Um, it reminds me of um, similar to what you'd see in like a, like a Mont Blanc, like a 149, where it has a bit of a bulge in the barrel. 
I think it's it's just a nice touch. Now, one thing I will say, this pen is smaller in person than um, than I would have assumed looking at the pictures. So I thought this looked like a pretty stubby but pretty big pen relative to the the sport, which, which it is. But if you compare it to something like a Lamy Safari, you see that it's actually not that big. Um, so now a couple of the what I think are the negatives. Um, the, this fenial here looks hilariously out of place. It just looks so small. And I think they did that because they use the same fenial as um, what they use in the sport, but the student has just so much more um, size that it just, this fenial looks kind of silly on, on the student. So just I think it's a cost saving touch that um, bugs me a little bit. The thing that bugs me the most, however, on the outside is this inject, injection molding sort of dent or indentation here where, where the injection molding um, nozzle was. I, I mean, as, uh, for a $60 pen, I would have hoped they would polish that out or buff that out or something. This just, this is the one part of the exterior of the pen that feels really cheap. Like this, this looks appropriate for like a platinum preppy, but this does not look appropriate for a pen that is $60. You know, $60 is not an inexpensive um, amount of money for a pen. All right, let's talk a bit about the inside. So one thing that is really cool is it, it this is a, a twist cap fountain pen, but the capping mechanism is very convenient. It's actually less than one full turn to open it. So very easy to open and close. But once you do open it, things start to fall apart. So it has this metal section, which I don't understand why. Um, I think a plastic section would have been more comfortable. I understand, see they tried to do this sort of hourglass shape with this metal section and this this type of shape is more difficult to do with plastic. Um, it's You probably need a thicker material, you probably couldn't get it to this level of um, this this uh, pronounced of a, of a shape with the plastic without having so much material that you probably couldn't get the, the internals to work. So I get that. I also get that they're probably trying to get the center of gravity lower. Uh, but this section is too thin for me relative to the width of the pen. I don't know how well you can see that in the video, but the barrel is not that narrow, but the section at the narrowest point does feel pretty narrow. Um, and the fact that it's just polished metal makes it quite slippery. I would have much preferred just a standard plastic section, would have been cheaper to make. I think it would have been more comfortable, but that's just me. Um, the other thing is this nib, um, it's a Yovo made nib to Kaweco specifications. It's the same nib that you find in the Kaweco Sport. I don't have anything really bad to say about it. It's just okay. It's not by any means really good at anything. You know, the feedback is okay. The feel is okay. The the uh, you know ink flow is okay. It's just it's just mediocre. Um, so those are what I think are a bit of the the disappointing aspects of the pen. Um, overall, I think it's actually a fairly attractive, well-built pen. Um, I think it's just interesting that Kaweco makes a model like this. It's so different from the the sport that if if it wasn't branded and someone showed me this pen just like this, I wouldn't have guessed Kaweco. And that may be a bit of a problem um, for them. But let's do a quick writing sample so I can show you how this mediocre nib performs, and then I'll do a quick wrap up. So this is the Kaweco student. This is the fountain pen. This is a fine nib. 
I'm just using the uh, factory supplied Kaweco blue ink cartridge. Um, you know, this is perfectly fine. It's just That's, that's how I feel about the writing experience. I think that given the fact that it has this narrow uh, metal section that's highly polished, this won't work well for longer writing sessions because I feel at least for, if you have hands that are my size, uh, my hands will probably cramp up a bit and this does start to get slippery. Um, and the feel of the nib is fine, easy to, to write with, uh, but nothing special. I will say that um, a couple years ago, maybe a few years ago, Yovo made the switch, or Yovo, uh, Kaweco made the switch between Bach to, to Yovo made nibs. Um, they said you couldn't really tell. They said that at, for a period of time they had nibs made from um, both of the manufacturers and they pooled them, so you couldn't really tell which was which because they were just made to Kaweco specifications. In my experience, the Yovo nibs tend to be thinner than the Bach equivalents. So this is a fine, and this is actually pretty similar to a, like a Japanese steel fine. And why do I emphasize the steel? Uh, because in my experience with the Japanese pens, the gold nibs, so let's say platinum, for example, the fine on a steel nib um, that you find in a cool or a kiridas is going to be wider than the fine you find in something like a 3776, which has a 14 karat gold nib. So this writes like a Japanese steel fine, which is still on the fine side of things. Um, so that's basically it about this pen. The final thing I would say is um, related to you know Japanese pens in general. This pen at $60 to me is not a strong value proposition. I think it looks cool. It's very doable, durable. The box is very cool. I mean, this, you know, this is probably worth seven to 10 bucks. Um, but for a nice fountain pen and a pen that writes well, I would recommend any of the pens um, in a previous video I made about the forgotten tier of Japanese fountain pens, I would take any of those pens over this. And I believe every single one of those pens is less expensive than this one, at least at the retail price. And I, I know there's at least one of them that are discontinued, but at the retail price, all of those pens are less expensive than this. And I think they offer a better value proposition. That said, if you're a Kaweco fan, you know, you want something from the brand that is very different from essentially everything else they make and is relatively affordable in the, the scheme of, of fountain pens, then this could be an interesting option. It's not my personal favorite. I don't think I'm going to get a lot of use out of it, but I think it, it is definitely a unique, interesting, and well-made option. So hope that was fun. Uh, thanks for taking a look at this Kaweco student with me. Talk to you soon.